Hey, this is Chi of the Chi Team, and welcome to another episode of HGTV in Home Style. Uh, I hope everyone is safe inside your home in these crazy times. So I'd like to create content for you, as you know. And my first interview in my interview series is with Liz Boehner with Maxwell and Edison Interiors. I say them those names correctly now because I don't say them correctly in the video. So once again, it's Liz Boehner with Maxwell and Edison Interiors, where we talk about uh, paint color because many of you might be thinking about painting your house because you're spending a lot of time in your house So we're gonna talk about paint color what's in what's out what to do what not to do So I hope you enjoy this video if you think you have any questions for us. Let us know Thank you for watching and enjoy Hey everyone, this is Chi with HGTV. We are here my First episode, and we have a very special guest, uh, Liz Baynard. She's with Maxwell Interior and Design. Is that how, how, what is the order here? Maxwell and Edison Interiors. You got Sorry it. about that. All right, there you go. All right, so, um, you know, we're doing, I'm trying to do these uh, video content to give um, people, my, my, my friends and, and uh, my clients, some tips about uh, everything. And um, Liz is here to, to explain her expertise in uh, staging and interior design. So tell us a little about about yourself, Liz. All right, let's do it. Um, so yeah, my um, bread and butter is staging. Typically, um, we do lots of vacant homes and um, we also do consults for occupied um, listings as well. So if there's homeowners that are gonna be living through the process of putting a house on the market, uh, we try to be comprehensive service to um, provide anything they might need to get the house ready to list. So we, um, we do what we call walk and talk consultations where we can go through the home with the homeowner, um, and give tips on uh, things like how to arrange their furniture, um, repainting if, if necessary, which I know we're gonna talk a little bit further about, um, any small cosmetic upgrades, um, even things like flooring, um, down to the nitty gritty um, of aesthetics, things like throw pillows, new bedding, things that can freshen up the home and make it look its best um, for photos and showings. So we sort of provide soup to nuts. <laughs> Fantastic, fantastic. And how many homes have you staged, would you say, Ballpark? Uh, let's see. We started in um, 2016, and uh, we tend to do about four or five homes a week uh, on average, sometimes more, sometimes less. So um, hundreds. <laughs> hundreds. All right. So you've been diff all different types of homes, all different types of layouts. So, so uh, it's, it's very, you ex expert at that. Yeah, one of my favorite parts of the job actually is that um, a given day can take me from a adorable little row home in Canton to a large single family home in Reicherstown, which is where I was this morning. You just never know um, where you're going to be in, in real estate, as we know. <laughs> all right, great. All right, so with this amazing, well, first of all, I want to introduce my background here. I'm at the beach. There's no one around me, so I'm very safe. <laughs> Um, and of course, we're living in this uh, crazy time right now, and a lot of people are home at the moment uh, with a lot of time thinking about painting a wall that they always want to paint or a room. So with your standard light gray color that you see everywhere, what are some of the uh, colors that you're seeing that are popular today? So that's a great question. So 2020's color of the year um, was, uh, I believe, classic blue. So it was really kind of a deep, very bold blue. Um, blues are always sort of in and out depending on, um, you know, your personal preference, of course. But I always tell clients, if you are painting or decorating for yourself um, versus planning to resell your home in the near future, uh, it's a very different animal in many ways. Um, we as stagers are usually pushing neutral, neutral, neutral. Um, and I know our agent partners feel the same. And the reason for that is we want to appeal to the widest audience possible. So we do love to have color, but it's typically used as an accent. So when we stage a home, we're usually bringing in um, neutral pieces. And then we have one accent color that we use throughout just to make it interesting, to make it feel inviting, to give a little pop in your photos. But for the most part, um, things like your walls and your flooring, you want it to be sort of a blank canvas um, where most people, the widest, widest audience of, of buyers possible are going to be able to come in and basically not have any objections um, to what they see, um, which is why that gray, um, it's man, it's got staying power. People are really <laughs> using all shades of gray um, and that still continues to be gosh, in the last five years or so, far and away the most popular um, color for repainting. 
Yeah, and my rule when I you know sell a house is uh, I don't want a, a buyer walking in. The first thing they think about is to repaint the house, repaint exactly. the room, um, yep. that they can move in right away. Right, and so and a lot of people, um, what I tell my clients a lot is you want that buyer, you want to make it easy to say yes. So that's an exact, um, an exact same idea there, where you don't want them to have any reason to feel like, oh, I'm taking on a project by buying this house. Um, and the great thing about repainting in a neutral shade is that it's not terribly expensive um, and it, it's a huge impact. Um, and like I said, it just creates that sort of blank canvas where we can then, um, whether you're staging with your own items or with items from, for example, staging inventory, you can bring in that personality, that inviting aesthetic with those accent pieces, but the overall look and feel of the house is gonna be something that's gonna appeal to just about everyone. Now, is there a difference between painting the whole room the same color or having, as you said, I think an accent wall, what's different? Yeah, so that's a great question. Um, so accent walls really had a moment, um, late 90s, all the way into the early 2000s and mid 2000s, people were doing an accent wall. Um, we I have a realtor who likes to joke about the red accent wall. There are a lot of dining rooms <laughs> with a red accent wall. And nothing against red, I love red. Um, but, but yeah, so that's actually kind of going by the wayside a little bit as far as design trends go. Typically when we um, recommend repainting, we recommend one shade um, for the whole main floor, sometimes even the whole house. Again, just in an effort not to have to reinvent the wheel and to stay neutral. Um, one pretty shade that's neutral that we know has um, wide appeal is, is, is a lot of bang for your buck without having to choose um, lots of different coordinating shades. Now again, if you're painting for your personal taste, um, you could certainly have fun with color. Um, you could do an accent wall. Uh, I always feel like um, you know, trends are trends and they come and go, but if you really had your heart set on having that one wall that um, is, a, is a specific color, or even nowadays people are doing um, wallpaper, believe it or not, is back in a big way. Um, and even people are doing fun accent walls with um, things like tile, with wood, you know, shiplap. Um, I'm, not, I'm not breaking any news here. <laughs> That's a big trend. Um, so yeah, wood, tile, even stone accent walls are having their, their time right now um, in the design trend world. <laughs> stone, you said? Yeah, so um, stone and stone-like tile um, okay. to create a wall. So um, yeah, and that's a really cool look. Again, I'm always cautious to recommend that if you're planning to resell a house, um, because you may have two out of three buyers that love it, um, and then that third buyer looks at that as a project or something to take down as soon as they move in. Um, but for your own home, I say go nuts. There's no rules. <laughs> no rules. Just uh, when you sell your house, uh, that, that may, we might have to just change a little bit. Uh, That's right. And especially those, yeah, especially those really bold colors, um, because um, as I'm sure you've seen many times, if you do decide to go with that deep blue or purple, um, that's going to take some primer and paint <laughs> to undo when it's time to resell. Multiple coats, you know, uh, definitely to go. And we'll, we'll provide the uh, actual link to the colors that Liz uh, recommended so that people know exactly what uh, what uh, what Liz is talking about. Yeah. And um. So we, this is one of my, mindful gray is one we use a lot. Um, but the one thing we should touch on about gray colors um, that I think, you know, people tend to want to just use one, a one size fits all approach. If you do have a lot of yellow in your flooring, so um, some of the older wood floors, um, definitely pine. I would not usually recommend a shade of gray. Um, they don't usually pair very well. So um, people uh, used to do very beigey beiges, but now there's like a grayish family, which you may or may not have heard of. So there's somewhere between that trendy gray and the warm tones of a beige. Um, Sherwin-Williams makes one accessible beige, which we recommend a lot. So just something to keep in mind. Um, you wanna make sure you've kind of um, held something up to your, to your flooring um, to make sure that you're not um, creating, going too cool or too warm, depending on what's on the floors there. I'm, I'm glad you touched on the flooring because one of the questions I was going to have is, should you pick a color that match to your furniture or actually as big as the flooring, right? Because the flooring is the other part of the biggest part of the room of the house. Exactly. So, so uh, that there's a fine line as to choosing the wall color to matching your, your floor versus your furniture. For sure. And then one other thing to always consider is the amount of light that a room gets. So if it's a darker room, um, you know, light and bright are our friends in real estate, as you know, um, and in life too, you want your home to feel, you know, filled with light and, and inviting. Um, and uh, so you want to make sure that you're um, 
testing that color in multiple rooms of the house as well, because it can look um, surprisingly different and drastically different depending on um, where you're looking at it and what time of day. And uh, many people who does it, they'll get the test of colors and paint, you know, certain spots on the wall just to see what it looks like, right? Yeah, exactly. Not a, not a bad way to go. And they even have now, um, they look like a plastic sheet or panel so you can get a larger sample um, up on the wall without having to, to do too much. <laughs> and what is the actual technique you should do? Is it up and down, sideways, or even the technique to actually paint the house? I think that's beyond my pay grade, Chief. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm getting a little deeper here. <laughs> All right, no problem. As long as look good. As long as look good. I think good, my right? husband probably have our own theories, and uh, they may not. Uh, <laughs> they may not match. <laughs> yes, yes. So, um, okay. So, so sounds sounds good. Um, what what are is there any do's and don'ts of? Um, I mean, we can kind of touch on that. So, no prime color. No, there are no prime color, bright, you know, red or blue or anything like that. That's that's uh, recommended, right? Yeah, again, putting on my two hats. My stager hat says, keep it neutral. My decorator hat says, do what you absolutely love. And as far as matching goes, um, my philosophy has been when I'm designing a room, if there's some piece that you absolutely love, that's a great jumping off point. So it might be a piece of art. It might be an area rug that you purchased that um, you kind of use as the inspiration for the rest of the room. And in that case, you can have a lot of fun um, with paint or, or wallpaper. You can pick out a shade that you really love in that piece. Um, we had an ottoman that um, had a busy print and I picked one of the shades of that and we actually matched um, the paint in our living room to that just because we really loved it and wanted to be surrounded by that color. So I think there's, like I said, in decorating, there's, you know, no rules, whatever feels good to you, um, is the right thing to do. Um, and for, you know, it, it's more, um, consulting your real estate agent, consulting those professionals who are, are going to tell you what, what those buyers are, are going to want to be, um, looking for what they're expecting when, when they come through the door. And just pop in my head, should you paint your ceiling the same color too or, or no? So I have seen some really cool um, ceiling colors. I typically recommend um, a white or off-white for your ceiling. But again, if you're um, going for a look of your own that you're just going to enjoy, um, I think it's a really fun choice to do that. Again, people are also tiling and wallpapering their ceilings too. Wow. So, okay. um, and we live in a, an age now which um, is really cool. And while we're all stuck at home, for sure, um, I always encourage people go on House, go on Pinterest, um, flip through, you know, HGTV magazine, whatever it is, find something that you really, really love. Um, rather than reinvent the wheel, you can at least start there and emulate that style. It might not be the exact layout of your kitchen or it might not be the exact living room setup that you have, but um, it's a great time to get inspired while we're just hanging around our That's house right. looking at these four walls. <laughs> all, those, all those house projects that you, you told yourself you're going to do, now it's the time to do it, right? That's right. Exactly. Uh, so besides paint color, um, what do you think are other things people can do around their house, inside the house or around the house? Um, yeah, so inside and around the house, I know we personally have started some outdoor projects just because good exercise, fresh air. Um, and if you are looking to sell your home, um, curb appeal is huge. That's truly the first impression um, that people are going to have, even online. You know, you're going to pull up the exterior. That's the, the first shot you're going to see of that house. Uh, and then certainly people right now are taking walks. They're maybe taking rides around the neighborhood with their families looking for that next dream house. Um, so, you know, the exterior is a great place to start. Um, and, you know, it starts with the simple things that might sound obvious, but if you have existing landscaping, making sure that that's pruned, that it's well cared for, um, you know, you're maintaining your lawn, maybe you've um, uh, added new mulch to the beds, kind of freshening those things up. Um, and then I always love a pop of color too. We're heading into warm weather. So um, you can start planting those annuals in your beds, or if you don't have a yard um, and you're downtown, you may have just a pretty planter um, of some flowering plants on your stoop, or maybe you've got some window boxes. It's a great time to kind of freshen those up. Um, we're still kind of in that middle uh, weather where we could get some frost. So there's some plants um, like pansies, for example, that are frost resistant, but they are really sweet and provide a little pop of color. So that's another thing you can do relatively inexpensive. You can do it while you're social distancing. Um, and then back to color and paint, you could even also tackle the front door, um, a fun color there. 
or you can just go with a classic um, black or gray, um, but just make it look nice and fresh. Yeah, the, the wall, the front door color, sometimes it pops. I've seen all types of color, red, bright red, you know, green. <laughs> um, that really, pop, that really uh, makes the house or the front of the house really pop. Absolutely. And then another quick thing, if you don't want to take on a big project like that, maybe you're just touching up your exterior paint, um, a fun wreath and a fresh um, welcome mat goes a long way too. When um, people come up to that door for the first time, it's just, you're already starting to send that message that we want to do um, with staging and home buying, that this feels like home. It's that emotional connection to the house for the right reasons. Correct. Yes, that, definitely. Definitely. Um, and actually, you were mentioning that uh, today, uh, today's April 10th, and I didn't see where I'm living, but uh, people posting that it was, uh, it was snowing. <laughs> so you were, you were <laughs> it was a uh, little flakes here and there. And, uh, and, uh, you know, it was, uh, people were surprised at that, which I am too. So, um, yeah, 2020 has been an interesting year. So, um, is there any other, now we touch on it being that you're a stager, What's the advantage of a house being staged versus uh, not staged? Now, uh, so, some people might have might be still living there. What's that difference, as you were saying before, of having it actually staged correctly versus not? So great, great point. Um, I think it's important to kind of define what staging is, um, and it probably varies a little bit, you know, based on who you talk to. But in my mind, staging can really be anything in that home preparation zone. So anything that's under that umbrella. Um, so we might be going into the house and helping the homeowners stage the home, or we might be bringing in to a fully vacant home, um, you know, floor to ceiling furnishings, area rugs, um, you know, sofa and accent pieces, artwork on the walls, etc. So really it can fall anywhere um, on that spectrum. I consider all of that to be staging. Um, it's basically just in my mind, getting that home photo ready, showing ready, putting its best foot forward. Um, and the main purposes of that, uh, it may sound obvious, but um, as we touched on before, you really wanna stand out for the right reasons. You want to uh, establish an emotional connection so that the buyer, when they come in, is envisioning their family there, their belongings there, spending holidays together around the table there. Those are the types of things that we know drive a buyer to make an offer. They kind of pull at the heartstrings. Um, so those are kind of what we're hoping to accomplish when we're helping our homeowners. Yes, and uh, my, my general rule a lot of times when I work with, uh, with a seller who's still living there, uh, if mm -hmm. I can recommend you already, is that uh, you know, less is more. You know, a lot of cl exactly. clutter a lot of times, you have, want to have a pathway <laughs> around the coffee table, able to get around it you know, without, with ease. Um, and I always tell clients that most likely they will make that decision, as, as you know, make that decision literally on the first floor of the house. Exactly. Um, so it's a little, like you said, it's a little form, a little function. You want it to look beautiful, which is part of the reason we declutter, but we also want to make sure that they, um, the less of the buyer that's there, the more they can make room for the, excuse me, the less of the seller that's there, the more we can make room for that buyer to say, oh, well, my pieces could go here or there. I can see, you know, my family's family gallery on the wall rather than the sellers. Um, and so that's why, you know, we don't say declutter and depersonalize to be mean, <laughs> but right. more so the house comes across as a commodity right. um, that someone else would want to buy. Um, and on that note, um, I don't know how you feel about it, but I, don't feel strongly that every single personal photo has to come down. I think it's okay that one or two remain in the space um, to say, oh, a happy family has lived here um, and enjoyed the space. But I also think, again, you need to leave that mental room for someone else to kind of feel like they could take ownership, literally, of the home. No, definitely. And, and that's the thing. We want someone to able to see themselves, their lives uh, in this house that they might buy. Uh, I, yeah, I have no problem with uh, a, a picture on, you know, mm -hmm. on a table or, or one picture. The main thing is that one of my rules is take everything off of the refrigerator. No, no, yeah. <laughs> no, no magnets, uh, you know, 15, 20 yeah. magnets. Uh, that's one of the, you know, nothing on top of the refrigerator, you know, countertop of the kitchen. It's nice and clean. But uh, yeah, I have no problem with a uh, picture here, picture there. They actually, you know, people want to see who lives here. Um, yeah. And, and that kind of like have a have an emotional connection too. It's like, oh, they have a kid and we have a exactly, kid. Exactly, exactly. Um, now, now they can see there's some type of progression. That kid who lived here 50, 10 years ago, now is right. growing up to be a teenager. So that's why they're moving. 
Uh, so it's a, it's a it's a good way to to show a human side of of the seller uh, instead of just everything. Now for me, I, I can I remember as years ago my former neighbor, um, she had on the on the on the staircase um, going up on that wall back wall. If you turn around, she had literally I think twenty uh, crosses. Oh gosh, uh, yeah. So nothing wrong with that. Totally no. nothing wrong. But it's very dramatic you know, to right. someone walking in. So I told her probably leave one, you know, you can leave one, there's no problem. But uh, 15 of them might be a little bit, a little bit too much. So, um, okay, well, um, I'll definitely include, obviously, Liz's info in this video and her recommendations of the colors. We'll, we'll definitely, you know, do more videos of this if there's any topics that, uh, that you guys are thinking, think that you need answers to. We'll definitely do another video of that. Um, is there anything else you want you want to mention, Liz? I don't think so. Thank you so much for having me, and um, yeah, I'm happy to help in any way I can, and hopefully we'll keep people busy and give them some projects to get started on while they're stuck at home. Yeah, get the projects started, and uh, once the market uh, is not as uh, crazy as now, uh, that people actually can come see your house, uh, your house will be ready to sell. Uh, That's to right. <laughs> that time. So, well, thank you so much, so much again, Liz, and. Um, Thank you for uh, everyone for watching. And if you have any recommendations of who you think I should interview, definitely drop me their name and I'll be more than happy to, to uh, interview that people, that person, all right? All right, thank you so much and uh, we'll see you next time.